What's up guys, Mitch Pelkey here back with another episode of Pelk Talk. Today I talked to the legendary Katie DeFeo. Katie is a former Division I lacrosse player at USC and has a YouTube channel and a podcast. And on that YouTube channel, she gives an inside look of what it's like to be a student at USC. And on that podcast, she interviews some big names. Definitely give it a listen. Katie is also fresh off working two years at the Premier Lacrosse League working with their social media team. I've become super close to Katie in these past two years. Her coming to Virginia, me going to Maryland, she's a homie for life. This is definitely one I've been wanting to make since since I started my podcast in March. Now, enjoy the DeFeo Pelkey Pelk Talk. What's up guys, Mitch Pelkey back again with another episode of Pelk Talk. Today joined by a long time friend, YouTuber, podcaster, former lax player, Katie DeFeo. How you doing, Katie? Mitchell, I am great. It is great to be spending my Monday morning alongside you, hanging out, talking, talking shop. I like that. Uh, you're, you're in Cali right now, right? Yeah, I'm out, I'm out of USC in my apartment. It's a little, a little different because we're not in person classes, everything. Campus is like shut down, but, you know, I figured I'm paying rent for this apartment. So I just come back out here, get settled, you know, do, do the dash. How, how's it been though? You've been there for about two weeks now. How's it been? It's been good. It's like I said, it's different, but I'm hanging out with like kind of my small group of friends and, you know, keeping it safe. And just like I've got, I've actually gotten a lot more time to like do stuff like this, which is great. Um, and so I'm, I'm liking it. I like that. Let's not waste any time. Let's hop right into it. Fresh off a boat from Utah, working with the PLL social media team at the PLL bubble. How was that? I mean, come on. That was probably so sick. I talked to Stelios about it. He said it was amazing. Give me your side of it. Dude, like, it's crazy because, like, when I was in high school starting out, like, filming lacrosse, you know, obviously, like, my high school, like, filming the boys team, like, like GoPro stuff of my team. Like, it was, like, unfathomable at that time to be able to, like, work with, like, the pros, like, the best to ever do it. And, you know, obviously, I come up through the ranks. Like, I make those relationships. And I I was filming some MLL guys, like, back when that was still popping. And I – Paul Rabel just starts the PLL. And, obviously, my name was in the ring for, like, an internship because I'm still in college. So, last summer, I kind of got to do that. We did the dash of the entire season, which was crazy, so fun. Like, I got to live back out here in the summer. I met all these amazing people. And then, but to be able to do it in a bubble, like in the middle of all of this going on in the world, like we all just met up in Utah, like we're just mobbing in the dorms. Like it was like, it felt like college. Like it was so, so fun. And just like a game every day, like just working with like the guys that like all of the lacrosse world looks up to. It's just like, it was literally a dream come true. Like there were moments where I would be standing there at the 50 yard line, like during a game. And I'd be getting like texts from people back home who were like watching and like, like just seeing it all blow up on Twitter. And I was like, I had to pinch myself. Like, I can't believe I'm really here. Like, it's literally everything that you would imagine. Like, it's just a dream. Like getting to like be with those guys, like work with those guys. Like the media team is like the best in sports, like by far. And just like being a part of that. And then just being like able to really get into it with all the guys, like is just unbelievable. Yeah. I remember like last year when you, when you first got the internship, like after the whole, league was done in the summer just like the media team you're like oh my god and then you got like the numbers back you guys had the most like interactions of like every sport for those like three months yeah. so it's sick but like compared to like last year with the internship towards this year you know was there any difference you kind of did the same gig yeah so it was for me it was kind of the same I was do I was so the first summer I was an editor so basically like I was never really shooting anything I was just like people would finish shooting something they'd bring me the clips and I would just cut it up like and I learned a lot through that like I was the in-game editor too so basically like Josh Rotman um who's like one of the goats at filming lacrosse greatest of all time by far he he stands at the 50 and he just shoots the whole game on this like beautiful high-res slow-mo Johnson camera that he has it's like unreal and I just run up to him after a goal I get the clip I get the SD card out of his camera I bring it back to my laptop and I put it in my laptop. I make a quick edit of that specific goal. And I throw some color correction on it, some music. Like, and then I just, whoever's with me, like last year I was editing with Nick Bailey. This year I was editing with Stelios actually. And whoever's with me would take the SD card, run it back to Josh, wait for the next one. So it's like this literal, like, like we try to get as many out as we can. And like, for me doing that again, like last year, I thought I had, I thought I had it down, but this year, like we just had a system and like we were able to get so many of those goals out which was super exciting. And then also this year I did a lot more shooting. Like I, I 
I feel like the team was a little bit more comfortable with me having the camera in my hands as well. So I'd be going out to try to get sound bites from guys. Like there's this funny story actually where we, um, the Whip Snakes and Redwoods were playing in the like in the first game. It was like a championship rematch from last year, and so I went up to Whip Snakes practice like with my camera, just trying to like you know get some sound about the Redwoods, stir the pot a little bit. And I go up to a bunch of guys and I'm like, oh, like, how do you feel about all the hype around the Redwoods? Like all the hype around the, the Redwoods off season. And they would just like give me a variety of answers. But then, so I go up to Kyle Burnlore and he goes, who's the goalie, by the way, for all those listening. Um, and he goes, yeah, you know, I mean, we should have beaten them by more. I'm guaranteeing another Whip Snakes win. And it was like one of those, like, I was really? like, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. So then we run it back to the like media room and I was like, guys, like listen to this. And like, everyone was like freaking out. So then um, we ended up using it on, in a hype video for the main account. And it was just like, it just like caused some waves. Like Kyle, like, and I, I was like joking with him after I was like, Hey, like, I'm sorry if I made you look stupid, but like, you're the one that said it boss. Like, and he was like, I know, I know I'm good. And then, so we were trying to get sound for the championship game, which was uh Whip snakes chaos. And basically every other team had left the bubble and the two championship teams were doing like a, like game day, media day, like right before. And I go up to Kyle and I ask him this question. I'm like, Hey man, like, what does it mean regardless of everything that like, you just get to have two more days, like with your boys here in Utah. And he gave me this great answer. And then as we were cutting away, I was like, Oh, by the way, like you said, you guys were going to win by a lot. Right. Just like checking. And he was like, shut up. Like, <laughs> and it's just like funny. Cause you like building that relationship and like rapport with all those guys, like, by shooting is not something I necessarily got with editing last summer. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. That's cool. Well, who would you say is a favorite uh, person to film out there? Well, so it's funny because it's not like I'm filming the game action. Like I'm just filming like their personalities. Yeah. So, I mean, Connor Farrell is a really fun one. Cause he's just like goofy cat he's just living. Yeah. He's just having a ball every single day. Um, oh, Jared Newman always is a good time. Good laugh. Yeah. He's just like, like you go up to him and he'll give you like whatever it is that you need. And he's, and he, he can turn it on be serious when you need like a serious sound bite. So, you know, we, we got it all. Flip that switch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's huge. So what was it like having Celios there, you know, a familiar face? Yeah, it was nice. I mean, I obviously like last summer I was the only intern and like really only like freelancer, I guess, like that went the whole time. And so this year having Celios was really cool because I've always, I've always admired Stelios' work, but like never really been able to like spend a long amount of time with him just because like we've, we've been friends from like afar. Um, he had visited LA and I like cooked him dinner. We would hang out. But like, other than that, like I hadn't really spent a lot of time with him, but I had always known like what he was capable of and like what his work ethic was like. So Stelios just pulling up and like, I'll tell you, like, I'm sure he was modest about it when you had him on the podcast, but he was a dog. Like he Monday. was every single day, like first one and last one out type of guy, like just, cutting up all the highlights like and I had done it before so like I would say like yo Stelios like I love that but like we do it this way just to make it faster and he's like boom done got it and like just would move on like he was like taking advice like taking initiative like we had this um Gatorade sponsored like plays of the day at the end of every day and and then we also had this Vineyard Vines video that we had to do huh? and it just like I started to do the Vineyard Vines ones and like Stelios just took the Gatorade initiative and was like like he would have the Gatorade plays of the day done before like the games were even over sometimes because he was just really? so, so good at it. And then that, that thing he said, he's, like, yeah. he's like, you know, when I was out there, I had to learn fast and I had to adapt to, uh, to perform at wh whatever they wanted to do. And he's like, that was the biggest thing for me. So it's kind of cool to hear that he, he really like worked hard and, and it seemed like he did a really good job. I mean, just from the stuff he posted and everything. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. He showed up and it, it was dope hanging out with him. Like he, um, that method man music video that we had, he cut that all and i remember so oh, basically really? yeah so there was he didn't say that that's sick that video i know i know he's and he's and i literally said to him that night i go tell you i hope you understand what you just did like this is huge like and he's like oh yeah i know i'm like no nah, dude like this is like nuts like so like, basically oh, i was like i was staying with brie harvey who was this other videographer and then emma and lisa who are my friends on the on the social team so they do all like the posting and then there was like this massive like fraternity style boys room with like literally <laughs> like they had three xboxes they had like everything you could imagine in the fridge like they had like this huge table with like stuff all laid over it like there were even like fraternity letters on the wall i think it was from like someone who had stayed before but it was just really? like so funny and there were like yeah. 10 bedrooms of two guys in each bedroom like 
three bathrooms like in a room it was nuts and so i would always go over there to edit at night because like the vibes were just like insane like the, everyone's just grinding like you see liam murphy the graphic designer just like cooking up the graphics for tomorrow like you got like you got freaking sammy b like editing photos like getting that right like you got brett roberts working on like paul rabel's vlog you got and then you got people like stelios who are just doing like kind of like what i do like whatever's needed of that day so yeah. i would just sit there at the counter with stelios like plug my laptop in and we would all just like work together all until literally three in the morning every single night it was sick that's sick if you could if you could describe rj in one word what would it be um electric electric i think rj is electric because it's funny because it's like you'd think it was just on camera and he does play it up on camera a lot the whole like what's up guys but <laughs> yeah. he is like that in real life and he does bring like a very very valuable energy to like every room that he's in that's how i describe him electric that's good that's sick well let's start from the beginning you know Tell the fans how we met. I think this is a great story, and I always yeah. tell my friends this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I'm – it's what? The summer after my freshman year of college. Yeah. I'm working at East Coast Dyes, and, uh, which is a, like, lacrosse company in Baltimore. And they had me shooting this, like, committed combine, which is basically where all these, like, really good players come play. Yeah, yeah there you go. You. Well, all these really good players come play and, like, get reps against each other, and it's like – like they're all still in high school. And I remember I was just filming, like doing my thing. And then after the game, this goofy kid just comes right up to me on the, on the track. And he's like, um, Hey, like I'm a big fan. Like, well, well, like, can we get a picture? And I was like, Oh yeah, of course. So we take a picture. And then did you run back to your bag to get the business card? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I ran, I remember I go up there. I'm like, Oh my God, this is so sick. I remember like in the game that you were filming, I was like, oh, my God, it's Katie Fayo. And at this time, you were, like, blown up. Like, you just dropped, like, Kaufman's highlight tape and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were lighting up. So I was like, oh, my God. So I was like, after the game, I was like, Dom. Like, my buddy Dom was there. It was just me and him. And I was like, Dom, like, we got to get a picture with Katie. So I was so nervous. We got the picture. And then when we went back to, like, pack up to leave, Dom's like, yo, I got one of your business cards. Like, <laughs> yeah. I run back over with this, like. I mean, do I have one? It's yeah. so funny. It's so funny. Hold on, I got one right here. Like, and when I, when you said you wanted a I'm like, picture, I'm like, yeah. hey, like, follow me on YouTube. <laughs> I give you this. And you're, what were your thoughts at that time? Well, so when you came up for the picture, you and Dom, like, both really nice kids, like, just very, like, polite. So I was like, oh, it just seems like a nice fan. And then when you gave me that business card, I like looked at it. And I was like, oh, this kid's different. Like, this kid definitely is like funny. Like, he's on my type of wavelength. So I remember I like go, I get in the car and I like start looking up your YouTube channel. And the first video I find is the, um, is your highlights where at the beginning is like <laughs> you like dancing and like, yeah, I saw like it it's so funny. And and then you like put your highlights to like Quinn Kesnich, like talking yeah. about like, yeah, I still show people that. I so it. I remember I saw that and I was like, oh my God, this kid's hilarious. And I watched some of your vlogs and I was like, wow, like we got to do a collab. Like we really got to make this happen. So then I remember I just reached out. I was like, yo, I'm so down to collab, like do a video together. Like, let's do it. Like you just like follow me on everything. I'm like, yo, like, let's link up and make a collab. And then I told you, I was like, yeah, like my dad lives in Maryland. And you're like, all right, let's like do it. I think we like linked up like the next week. Yeah. We went to like that cliff jumping spot with Mikey. Yeah. With that Mikey Hermeyer. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. Like you, you shot up to Maryland, like respect the grind. Like, and then you just my like dad, showed up at my house like, and like, I was Dude, I was so nervous. That is so funny. Like, I just remember being like, oh, this kid's so funny. Like, I can't wait for, like, him to just, like, like be my friend. Like, I was like, this is awesome. So now, then you... I was, I was watching those vlogs earlier today, and at the time, I had, like, 3,000 subscribers. Yeah. Like, looking at the video I made with the edits and everything, I'm like, this is so cringy. Like, the content's good, but, yeah. like, the way it's, yeah. it's like, this is brutal. No, oh, it was so funny. It's still so funny. And, like, yeah. I just... It was crazy. Like, I will say right when you got up to, to Maryland and we just started hanging out, like it was like an instant click. Like yeah, there was, sure. it was really just so not natural. really, like, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah. we're going to both make a video with each other. So we both like get more followers. Like, yeah, it was just so like natural. Like I remember like the jokes we were seeing at each other, like yeah. make each other laugh. Like yeah. just that feeling. I was like, yeah, this, this will be a long time friendship for sure. Yeah. And that's, that's the coolest part about it is like, it happened so naturally, like at, that game you just come up to me and then now we're just like homies and yeah. I also think what can't be overlooked is the winter aspect of our friendship where I would drive down 
to your area and I would just at Virginia as you put it. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just head on down there and come to the Christmas party with the friend group. That was I, remember, I, I still look at that video as like one of the best videos and like nights of like my high school career. Cause I can remember so I went down like one of my girls, Lily Boswell, always had a Christmas party like every year, like four years straight in high school. And for this one, or no, back up actually. So that summer, Lily is up at USC and she's texting me. She's like, hey, like my cousin goes here, but I really want to meet Katie Fair. Like, you think you can text her, blah, blah. So I texted yeah. you and you're like, yeah, absolutely. So you guys like met at the locker room. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Or and everything. Which yeah. Was cool. And then that, that Christmas coming up, she threw a party and she told you to come up and surprise me. And I just remember, like, as soon as I got to the party, everyone was staring at me. So I knew, like, something was up, but I didn't know, like, I didn't think you at all. Because because one of my girls called me, and they're like, hey, like, you got to hurry up. I'm like, what? And I remember I was making my famous Rice Krispie treats. And I, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, you got to hurry up. I'm like, why? They're like, just just come. Like, I'll show you. So I got there. It was so awkward. And then we're all taking a picture in front of the Christmas tree. And, and then I and just and burst you know. out of the basement, dude, from the, yeah, and then we all just linked up, and it was, like, this moment of, like, shock, like, everyone was just, like, what is going on, and I had, like, the, the reindeer hat on, and, was, and <laughs> I did a great championship crew neck with this, what's it, yeah, yeah, song. yeah, I just wrote Christmas on it, and it was Christmas sweater, and I, that day for me, so, like, the the little sidekicks in Mitchell and I's journey is Dom Cole and Bella Blumenberg. We Absolutely. drag them around. Absolutely. We drag them around wherever we go. And they're, they're there for every collab. So when I got word of this Christmas party, I hit up Bella. I was like, who was, yeah, still in high school. She's your grade. Huh. Um, and she was like, oh, bet. Like, let's go. So Bella and I hop in my, like, family's, like, 2003 forerunner. The lights, like, aren't working right. Like, I remember, like, I got, like, Halfway there, we ran out of gas. It's like torrential downpour raining. Like I'm trying to drive down to like God knows where Virginia. I've never been like, and then so we just stop at this Safeway to like just get a little bit of a rest, like grab a water, like. And I find this reindeer hat, and I was like, oh, let's go. Like this is easy, and it just like didn't even fit my head, and I just like threw it on, and I oh my god, and I just that the the screenshot like when you pause the video of me coming up like to surprise you of me just like Cameron, I'm like <laughs> like and the yeah. reindeer hat is on. It's so funny, dude. Oh my god, it was, yeah. it was just I just remember being so in shock, and then that night was just like so fun. Like we we're all in the basement, like partying, having a good time. Yeah. Like you were there, and like. So there was so, and I just remember like, it just like the party just being like you and Bella and my friend group and the parents. And then like, once you got on social, it was like, oh my God, let me go. Can I come to Lily's? Can I come to Lily's? Like, yeah, yeah. Come. That was wild, dude. Was that was wild. I wanted to take a picture with you and everything. And dude, and that I, was, was wild. Like, I don't know. It was just like a moment I'll never forget. Cause it was, it was so funny and it was, everything was just so genuine about it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, I remember somebody like threw me up on their Snapchat story. And then next thing you know, like the whole town is just at Lily's and there's like, and then there was like this random like nine year old. And I was like, she's like, can I get a picture? I'm like, yeah, of course. Like, I was like, where are all these people coming from? Like, it was so oh, funny. God. And then now I, I remember I made like a rule where I was like, I'm just going to follow every single person back on Instagram who lives in Mitchell's town. So now really? I'm like scrolling my feed sometimes and I'll just see like, Oh, like prom night? Like I got everything. Like graduation day, everything. Like I just, it's, I literally follow like every single one of those kids. And it's so Thursday. funny. Yeah, that was a great day. We can go on and on about that, but obviously yeah. let's keep on going here. So yeah, how did you kind of get into the YouTube game? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So what I always thought YouTube was for me in high school and my early freshman year was just like posting the edits that I had made. So like lacrosse highlights and like you know like Kaufman stuff like we talked about and just like like even like for me my freshman year fall I made like a little GoPro edit of my fall with my friends um and so that was like what I thought like YouTube would always be just like fun edits like that and then in the spring we had our like our first game was coming up I was a freshman on the team like I wasn't playing too much and I was having a blast so I was like all right, I'm just going to like vlog a day in our lives, like a simple practice. And then like we go on throughout our day and I'm just going to vlog it. Like I had a Canon ADD with like a, like a wide angle lens, still yeah. use it. And I just, we, we, I woke up and, or no, at that point I was still using the G7X and at that, and so I, we get up and we just like, 
I remember I just was like, I'm just going to film my entire day, like from my perspective and like vlog it too, like talk to the camera. And so I did that all day and I wake up, we're going to practice. We did that. Like we left practice, we were vlogging right away. Like I got one of my professors to be in it. Like, I just like, was like, I want to show like how cool our lives are at USC. And so, and then I remember I never really posted like me in front of the camera before. Like maybe it was like, I was, yeah, always behind it. Like I was probably like a little self-conscious, you know, like probably didn't think I was like funny or like good enough to be like a vlogger or whatever. But I think initially why it took off and like why they did so well is because we were all kind of like joking. Like it was like a joke of a vlog. Like we, it was like, we weren't taking ourselves seriously. Like we were just like messing around like the little like, oh, subscribe. (laughs) Like we're just like messing around. Like, and so I think people just gravitated towards it because it was cool content because it was like the day in the life of like a really cool university, a really cool sport. Like, and, and then we just kept pumping. Like I remember my coach, we were at Virginia tech for my first game and my coach. And so the vlog was set to go live like the day before the game, the first vlog. And my coach like calls me into her hotel room and she was like, Hey, like, I just want to make sure you don't have any um, old stuff on your channel. That could be like um, NCAA, like could cause problems with the NCAA. And I was like, oh God, like I wasn't even thinking about the, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, I just vlogged like, and I was like, oh yeah, like I'll go look now. So I take everything down, whatever, like a bunch of ECD stuff, like things like that. And I just remember like the, I posted it. And then all of a sudden, like we just started getting Instagram followers and like, it just started like being shared and like, yeah. and, and then I just made a vlog of Virginia tech. And then I made a vlog of Notre Dame and like, we just every single week had content. So then it got to a point where Amanda Flahan, one of my best friends, um in that year she tore her acl and it was like this terrible moment at practice like we were about to play bc i'll never forget it like it was scout team like we're down on the the close side of the field and she just like like landed on it wrong and so it was torn done like she had battled back from a torn acl before like it was a tough tough day so she was like all out of sorts and me and izzy and so me and izzy like wanted to make a vlog to try to like cheer her up yeah. And then, so we, we were like driving all around LA, like just me and Ez, like trying to find stuff that would like make Flay happy. And so literally we go to like Rayo's, like my favorite restaurant. And we go there and we like, we call Johnny. We're like, yo, Fla- Amanda Torre ACL, like, what do you got? He's like, oh, come by the joint. Like, I'll give you cheesecake and meatballs. Like, so we go there, we, we grab that. And then we, we go try to find this like Webkins. Cause yeah, Flay I the, remember Webkins. This video. the vlog is like iconic. Like, so we're like doing the dash, like driving all around Los Angeles. God, you can't find a Webkins in the city of LA. And we finally find this like toy store in like the back corner of this random mall. And, the, and all of a sudden, like, no one had had a Webkinz. And we walk in, and there's, like, this, like, holy grail of Webkinz on the wall. And I was like, let's go. And so that just became a whole vlog. And then people loved it. They were like, oh, you guys are such good friends, blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, and then I just – I kept making vlogs with Izzy of trying to cheer Flay up. I kept showing the team life. And then I started doing collaborations. Like, I got um, Justin Escalona on the vlog, which was super exciting. I got Danny Duncan on the vlog. I started watching that the first time. I was like, oh, my God, this is so sick crazy like and i had always looked up to justin like when i was in high school because i obviously committed usc super early Mm -hmm. and so he was like popping off at that point and i remember i was always watching his stuff and danny duncan's just like a legend obviously like next question i don't know how i pulled that off but yeah (laughs) so it's and i think that is when i realized first with justin and danny is like when you do a collaboration and this is for all the aspiring youtubers out there there needs to be something for both people involved you know so like I think with Danny, it's part of his brand that he likes to go try sports because it's funny. And I knew that. So when I had no followers or subscribe, I had less than a thousand subscribers when I DM Danny and I was like, Hey, like I'm a YouTuber. I'm starting out. I got big dreams, big goals. Like, do you want to come play lacrosse against me? And like, it would be funny for a vlog. Like you can do whatever with it. And like, I'm going to vlog it too. And he just goes, yeah, what's your phone number? Like, cause I think that he saw the value in it. And like, same with Justin Escalona, like he wanted to make a video about playing lacrosse. And so he, he got value in that too. So it's like, that's when you start to realize like that you can put something in it for them as opposed to like them just giving you like a charity opportunity. That's when you get the best collaborations because like they really want to be there too. And like, that's the one thing I've really learned about that. No, I can, I can remember. I still remember like you posted the Kaufman highlight tape and I'm watching. I was like, Oh my God, this is sick. And I can remember that profile picture that you had. And then you went to USC and you made that Virginia Tech vlog. And then I remember watching it. And I was like, I know that profile picture. And then I was looking through all your, your videos. And like at the time, the coffin one was like the most viewed one. I was like, oh my yeah, God, by far. same girl. And then ever since then, I've been like just following you. But yeah, 
funny. What would you say is your favorite video on that channel? Gosh, so yesterday I did a Q&A on Instagram and someone asked me that. And it's so tough because like there are so many like good. And for me, it's not even like good vlogs or most viewed vlogs. It's like good memories. Like, yeah, like just, funny. I'm sure, you know, like looking back and being able to like replay those moments in your life is like an unbelievable experience. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorites is I made like a, my first semester edit of my sophomore year. And it was just like, it was like the best semester of my life. Like we were vibing. Like yeah. I was doing KT verse, like with all those other athletes. I was, I was like getting like um, sideline tickets to football games. Like I was like, just, we were living it up. And so that video is like three and a half minutes to like a really fun song of me and my friends, like best memories. And then I would also say like, honestly, like the Christmas party that with you, that's a great video too. Yeah. That one's all time. Like, like memory wise, like I think that's honestly half the reason why I do it. Like I don't really want to go in high school and film my prom because it takes away from it. But at the same time, it's like when I'm 80 old, yeah, sex, I want to sure. go back and, and, and view that, that memory in that video. So I'm, I'm sure. in the same boat as you. I mean, I think memories is, is the reason why I really do it. Yeah. And I, I actually have a question for you. So, my we're both lucky in the sense that our friend groups like love it and like i know like your high school boys loved it and your and your college buddies seem to love it yeah. um and it's like that with me too here at usc like all my friends are hip like they know the vlog like they know um what's going on so my question for you is obviously it's never easy to like film in a situation where you don't know if people are like reading the vibe like that you know so when you guys went on that trip for your freshman year like right before you even went to a house to get yeah and you were whipping out the camera like what how did you get yourself to do it because i feel like for me i would have just oh been like God. i'm not gonna film this like how did you just like do it no i, re I, I remember talking to Celius about this and it, i was just so nervous but at the same time in the back of my mind i was like look film get anything and everything it doesn't matter if it's good or not you're just really gonna want to look back on this when you're old and in the moment, I'm like, like, they knew me as like the, oh, this kid has a YouTube channel, the YouTuber. So yeah. it was nerve wracking because like me vlogging in front of like 50 guys, I really don't know. It was yeah. so, I was so nervous, but I was like, okay, like just get anything and everything and, and just go. I just remember like thinking yeah. that like, as soon as I wake up, like just start filming and talking and, and I look back and I'm like, the video is pretty good, but like if it was this summer, like when I was a sophomore going, the video would have been so much better because I was just yeah. so so comfortable with the guys but at the same time like I'm glad we went then because as soon as we got to campus like I knew everyone's name I knew where they lived like just yeah. the brotherhood was like already set in stone before it's he had perfect. Yeah. the first day yeah that's amazing it was sick what you think that's kind of hard sometimes is like filming in front of people you don't really know yeah not like filming in front of people you don't know but like trying to get people that you don't really know like into it you know yeah. like i mean because it's stressful like people say let's make a vlog make a vlog well it's like you have to bring the energy and like say all this funny stuff and you're hoping your friends do that <laughs> video so it all is up and it's like stressful yeah. that, like if they're not doing that you can't just be like yo like say this because then it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah pick it up yeah and it's like yeah, well, I, as natural as possible that's why i think like me and you like when you're making a vlog you got to have someone like me and you to kind of set the vibe in and yeah. saying it. Cause like at the end of the day, like if, if we were boring and we were making vlogs and the, the atmosphere around us would be boring. Yeah, exactly. So it's and that's what I think stressful. Yeah. But that's what I think makes the great vlogs and like what the vlogs that I like looking back on is like when everybody's like got that vibe and like, it's just like wild. Like it's like such a fun, like viewing experience yeah. like when everybody's just vibing. And I think like, that's something I struggle with too. It's like, sometimes like I want like, a certain video to be about something and I make it too structured. And then at the end, I'm like, this is so like set in stone. But then like, if we're just sitting on the couch, like I got the camera up, like saying different slang words and everything, like that's so funny, but yeah, then it's exactly. like, there's really no content behind it. Besides no, laugh. not at all. Dude, like me and me when, so there was this point where like we, um, I wasn't really allowed to be like vlogging at games. Like, cause it was like, whatever, like all these rules in my, in my program that I've spoken to you about. But, um, so me and basically me and my teammates, like me, Maddie O'Brien and Kelsey Huff, like every night last spring would just like, or every week, once a week would just like have this like content night where we would like set up the camera across from their bed and like sit on the bed and play like game shows. Cause like, that was all we could really do. Yeah. We didn't have the time to go be vlogging, like whatever. So we're sitting there and like, we would just like make up these stupid games. Like it would be like truth or dare, but like not really. And then we'd have like pick your poison, which was like, you would 
it was like, would you rather? And like, I was like, and it was just like, not even the game that was funny, but just us trying to like figure it out. And like, just those moments end up being the funniest. Like, yeah. just the less yeah, structured the natural stuff. stuff. Yeah. That I look back on. But seven months ago, you go to YouTube and tell everyone you're quitting playing lacrosse at USC. You know, how hard was that decision? What, what was that decision like for you? Yeah. So it, it was a lot. Like, it was a lot riding on that. Um, a lot was going into it. But at the end of the day, um, I really just – woke up and I was like, I'm not happy doing this anymore. And you got to be happy in life. I'm a firm believer in that. And like, you got to love what you're doing um, and always like push yourself. And I think I just like, I had been through a lot with lacrosse in the fall and I got back to campus in the spring and I was kind of in like a dark spot. And I remember I had like all this anxiety and I went to my um, friend, Maddie O'Brien, and we just, whenever I'm like feeling anxious or like down or whatever, we just like go to Dunkin', like get some coffee, like go to Target, like vibe. So we had yeah. this great day of like all of our favorite things to do. And on the way back, I'm still like anxious and like tweaking about like practice the next day. And I was like, I don't know why, but I just am. Like, it was just weird. Like, I just like wasn't loving it anymore. And so Maddie was like, I think you need to like think about this. And then I thought about it and I basically just told my teammates, I was like, listen, like, I am really, really, really passionate about this video stuff. Like, I feel like I'm pretty decent at it, but I have no work experience because I have this huge time commitment. Yep. And at that point, there had been opportunities that I had had to turn down. Um, just filming in the city of Los Angeles, like, I couldn't do it because I was, I, so basically got to a point where I had to make a decision one or the other. So I was like, all right, I'm going to quit lacrosse. But the one thing I'm not going to allow myself to do is quit lacrosse and then just like sit around. Like, I need to like, fill the time and like go chase my dreams. So I quit lacrosse. Um, it was an emotional moment. Like with my teammates, I went in there to the locker room and I was like, Hey guys, like, this is the deal. Like I'm, I'm leaving. Like I got to chase my dreams, like um, whatever. And I thought everyone would be like, I don't know what the like reaction I was expecting was, but everyone was just like proud and like was coming up to me, like pat me on the shoulder, like go get this, like it's your time. Like, Sick. like go do your thing. And I remember the biggest thing for me was, when I told Izzy McMahon, who, and I touched on this with our podcast when I interviewed Izzy, but I was expecting, like, I don't know, she's the captain, she's the leader, like, she loves lacrosse, like, she eats, breathes, sleeps, this stuff, like, she loves yeah. it, and I know she loves having me around, like, and our friendship was born in lacrosse, and, like, whatever, so I remember I told her one off, and just her reaction, like, really made me realize that, like, I should really go chase my dream, like, I should really go try to make more videos and like free up my schedule and like really do this because she was like dude like you're like a cage butterfly like you need to just like get out of here like just go do your thing like go chase it like go go get that money like go do what makes you happy yeah. so that night after I quit I'm in a gas station in LA and I just filling up gas going on a long ride just to like clear my head and I d I remember that I had gotten a dm from a guy in November and he goes Hey, like, love your work. Like, what do I got to do to get you to film my NFL combine group? Like I'm a speed development coach and I got all these guys coming out to LA and we're going to like, I'm going to train them until the combine, make them really fast. Like, what do I have to do to get you to film it? And I remember I was like, Oh, I'll get back to you in November. And I never, I never did because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it because of this time commitment. Yeah. And, and he goes, I got Joe Burrow. Like he was like talking about all these great guys he had coming in. I was like, all right, like that sounds sick, but like I have lacrosse practice, like, you know, so so then that night I was literally in the gas station and I was like, Oh my gosh, like I got to DM that guy. So I find him in the DMS. I DM him. I'm like, yo, like, when can I start? Like long story short, I just freed up my entire schedule. Like what's the deal? And he was like, all right, like start next week. Like, let's go. Like you're in like, and I was like, all right. So then I'm driving down to orange County hour, hour there, hour and a half back, like just on the grind, like filming these NFL players, like, Joe Burrow was there, all these guys, like, and just getting that experience and, like, telling their stories and, like, just being trusted with the camera in my hands and, like, and I'll tell you, like, waking up to go there, I was jumping out of bed, like, at five in the morning and waking up to go to lacrosse sometimes at, like, nine, I was just, like, not feeling it. And, yeah. like, it's crazy to me, like, when you really find something that you love doing, like, chasing that. And, like, I, that's why I'll never regret my decision because I filled the void with, like, something I really enjoyed. Yeah. So would you say it was more of like you kind of got sick of, of playing lacrosse or you, you just wanted to do this video stuff um, 
and your coach didn't really give you the opportunity to, to kind of mix the two together. Yeah, so my coach was very supportive of all of my goals and dreams, um, but there was a point where I wasn't really allowed to be vlogging too much around like the team or around like times where we were supposed to be serious, which I totally understand. And I had had a run-in with the NCAA. Um, and that was a very interesting experience because basically I had just mentioned a brand in my video. Like I had just jokingly said like a brand name mm -hmm. and, and I put the logo on the screen and I put like funny music because I thought it was like a funny thing. But so it got sent to the NCAA by someone, I don't know who, and which is kind of sus, but, and then, <laughs> and then um, the NCAA like told my coach like, hey, she's ineligible. And so I basically was ineligible for like a month. And like my coach was obviously very upset because I, even though I didn't know, like in my heart of hearts that like that was against the rules, like I should have, because you know, it's like my responsibility to like be like educating myself on that stuff. And so that kind of, she was like, you can't be doing that. And like, I remember the anxiety and pressure I was feeling to just like not mess up in that regard. Like every time I posted a video, I was like tweaking about it. Like, and I, and I had all these big lofty goals to have like a podcast and have like more more weekly content and like to like have all these dreams of video and like the pressure coming down from the ncaa the rules where i couldn't really vlog like me falling less and less out of like more and more out of love with lacrosse and like it was kind of just this perfect storm where i was like all right like if i want to really take my content to the next level and like have a podcast and tell these stories and like be unfiltered like i was basically filtered by the by you know yeah, by yeah. the powers that be and yeah. so i was like i gotta get out of this so that's what it was it was just a perfect storm of stuff and I think it just reached a point where I was like, I'm confident in the decision I'm making. Like I'm trusting my gut and that's what I did. So what was that kind of conversation like with the NCAA when they kind of reached out to you? Yeah. So I was, I remember I was about to go to the bathroom actually in my locker room and I was just like chilling, vibing, like, and I get a call from my coach and she's like, yo, your video from December got flagged. Like, where are you? Come to the office. Like she was very upset. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea that that wasn't like, Cause I always had just thought you can't like make money. I didn't think that yeah. you couldn't like jokingly mention a brand. Yeah. So, cause I was not like I was getting paid by the brand, but whatever. So, um, so then she was like very mad and like told me like I was ineligible and like all this. And like, I was like, Oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And because basically like it reflects poorly on the program and somebody has like an NCAA thing. So that's why I totally got from her perspective. Like she's like, you're not, you're not just responsible for yourself, like you're responsible for all of us, like me included, like everyone. And I was like, I totally get that. Like, I'm really, really sorry. Like I messed up. And then my compliance director calls me and she's like, Hey, like, yeah, you got ineligible, but like, don't tweak, like you're fine. And I was like, Oh my God, like, what do you mean? Like I, I was tweaking all day. Like she was like, no, you're fine. Like, she's like, you just like, you know, like it was a little bit against the rules. You're ineligible. You guys don't have another game for a month. So all you have to do is just like come on out of my office, sign this paperwork and like, you're good. And I was like, okay, sweet. Thanks. Like, geez. And so it was like not that big of a deal, but like also a big deal. And like, I don't know, it was just, it was wild though. I remember being like, damn, like, and then it was an anonymous person who sent the video to the NCAA. Could they like, not tell you like in, for like legal reasons who sent it? No, they, they just didn't. She didn't. She was like, I don't want to do that. And I was like, so what? You were ineligible for like three days or something? Well, no. So we, she, my compliance, so basically it was like January, whatever, 10th. And our first game wasn't until like February 10th. Yeah. So we had like a month. So my compliance director like wasn't really freaking out about it. It was just kind of letting me do my thing. And then she was like, we just got to make sure we do it before your first game. So then like the week before the game, she comes in and, or she calls me in and I did it. And so I was good. But so I was technically ineligible for like a month, but like it wasn't really, it didn't have to be that. Like you're still was, back to the team though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was chilling. That's good. What about, um, you know, what was that conversation like with your coach um, when she kind of told you you can't really film around the team anymore? Yeah, it was, it was, um, it was interesting. I totally understood, but I was just upset because like, I didn't think that there was necessarily much like pushback from my end. Like, cause obviously she's my coach and like, I completely respect everything she does and like her decisions, but I had definitely seen benefits in what I was doing. And like, I was like, for example, we would have recruits come to campus and they would like be all like wanting to talk about the vlogs, like ask about the vlogs. And then like, we would have like more people at our games and like, more like articles about us like and you know like we I, I feel like the vlogs are kind of bringing like a little bit of a buzz to USC lacrosse yeah absolutely and I just wish that had been like I could have advocated for that a little bit more than I did but that's just you know that's it is what it is yeah so when you kind of 
went to your coach and, and said uh, you, you were going to quit the team, you know, what was their kind of reaction? Yeah. So Lindsay's like been there with me since the beginning. Like she, she like recruited me when I was super young, like, and she has this thing where like, basically she always says like our parents send us out here to 3000 miles away. So like we can be taken care of. And like, she knows like what we all need. And like, she's always been good about that stuff. So I don't, I, and I just like, for some reason was like, I was just flustered. So I walk in. And she's like, hey, how's it going? And I just like started shutting the door behind me. And I was just like, I, I like blurted out. I was like, I quit the team. Like, I'm quitting. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, okay, sit down. Like, you're good. Like, let's talk. Like, because I just like blurted it out. And yeah. so then like, you know, just the tears start flowing. And I was like, I just, I was like, I can't do it anymore. Like, I really, really just want to get like, get right with my camera and like, just chase my dreams, like chase my passions. And like, I was like, I'll always be around like, this isn't anything that you did or like the team did. Like, I love the, I love this team more than anything in the entire world. And I was like, I know you know that. And she was like, yeah, no, you're good. Like, don't worry. And then she was like, you can still be around the team as much as you want. Like you can travel on trips if you want to. And like all this stuff, like she was like, I will, I still want you around. Like whether it's like you're a manager or like you're our videographer, like I don't care. So she was like, she wanted me around. And I kind of realized that like it was the best of both worlds for everybody because I got to do my thing like that I love doing, but then also, be with the team and I, I didn't lose any of those friendships which I'm, I'm thankful for so it just was like yes. it ended up being fired have you ever thought about you know working with the with the girls lax team doing video and instagram and all that or no yeah so i like i wanted to in the spring but then you know i was i was super busy with what i was doing for lester spum and the the speed coach mm -hmm. and they already had like a video team at usc and i kind of wanted to just like take in the games and like sit with the parents and like relax um, but so I was thinking about going on some travel trips or like starting that up later in the season, but then just, you know, Corona happened. Oh, yeah. And so everything got just slaughtered, no season, everything. And now there's not even fall ball. So it's like, I, there's nothing to even be filming, which is crazy. Yeah. So what's life like for Katie DeFeo now at USC as like a regular student? Yeah. So I wake up, I uh, text my, my homie, Maddie O'Brien. I'm like, we want to get some Duncan. We get Duncan. And then we potentially get some eggs or some, yeah, some eggs and bacon at this place, Nature's Brew, fire spot. Um, and then we'll come back, you know, just like shoot the stuff, like hang out. Um, and then I have classes in the afternoon. And then after class, I'll have dinner or I'll go over and eat dinner with one of my ex teammates. Um, Izzy McMahon and I have been watching a lot of NBA basketball. You know, it's just like we, it's, it's weird now because like, there we're not like obviously able to like do as much because of like coronavirus but yeah i will say like i'm filling my time more with like things that i really love like i get to wake up every single day and devote however many hours of my day to like my podcast and my youtube channel and like everything that i love doing and i now have a job working for lesser again in the down in orange county so i'm down there two days a week i'm loving that That's it's sick. so fun like it's it's my life like my schedule every day is just filled with things that i enjoy doing and like that's the dream that is the dream. So, like you said earlier, you recently you recently started a podcast when all this kind of COVID stuff hit. Connect with KT. You know, why'd you start that podcast? Yeah, so I always felt like, always felt like, this goes way back. Like, I've wanted to start one for a long time. I've always felt that, like, there are so many stories that need to be told um, in women's lacrosse specifically. I've always, like, that was always, like, the, the um, motivation behind it. Just, like, there are a lot of stories in our sport that aren't being told. And especially within our team, like people saw the vlogs and they saw like the highlights and they saw everything. But like, I just thought it would always be so cool to like sit down with like some of these people for like an hour and just like talk it out, like, and just get these stories told, like behind the scenes stuff. Like, and I just really like, it drives me to get like cool guests on, like, and just have them like explain where they are in life and like what's going on, you know, probably same thing with you. Like, I just, I, I love the idea that like, there are stories right now that aren't being told and like I could be the one to like present them to the world. Like yeah. I just love that. And I think me and you're in the, in the same boat with that. Like I can tell, like obviously knowing you for a couple of years and same with me, like we genuinely just like having like a good conversation with someone. Yeah. And oh my gosh. Yeah. Besides like the networking part, but just like meeting someone new and having like a good 30, 45, an hour minute conversation with yeah. someone about like what he or she does or, or plays is like, I don't know. It's like, it's so different from YouTube, but at the same time, it's like, I'm glad. Cause it's, it's always a brick. Like, Oh, I just worked on the script and now we're doing the podcast yeah. okay, tomorrow. I'm filming. So it's different. I like that balance too, but like, yeah, I think the podcast game is so different, but at the same time, it's like, 
I'm so glad. Like I, lo I love just like having a conversation with someone about something. Yeah, for sure. I think it's so fun. And I love hearing like, cause I think a lot of people in lacrosse have like the same story kind of, you know, like you grow up, you love the game, you go to college, you like whatever. A lot of your guys like go to the PLL, but like, I just think there's so many different parts of everyone's story. And like, there's so many that like, like for me, like quitting. And like, yeah, I just now got to tell that story, which I hadn't really told a lot of it before. And like, and you, when you're coming on my podcast, like I'm going to get the whole details about like why Ohio State, you know, like it's just, I, I just think it's so cool that we present ourselves like the vlogs, like what our life is. But like when we get to go on the podcast and, and talk, talk it out with people, we get to like kind of say why, like why are all these things happening? Details. I love that. What would you say is your favorite guest so far? That I've had on mine? Yeah. Gosh. I really liked Alex Oss. She yeah. was, she's been like a friend of mine for a long time. Like, and I was like nine years old when she was in college at Maryland and I was going to her games and I have like literal pictures of me as like a nine year old at her games. And now we're like, yeah, that was like same with me with Pinnell. It's like, Oh my yeah. God, you're talking yeah. to a guy like you looked up to your whole life. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And like, so Alex and I, once we became friends, like I always joke that I'm like 10 years younger than her cause I am, but it's like funny. Um, <laughs> and then another good one I had was Colin Joyce. Who's like a good friend of mine. Yeah, um, yeah. He, I had him come on and I just, wanted to be able for him to just like completely have the floor and like talk about like being black in America and like all that stuff and like for him to just be able to like explain his stance and like what people in lacrosse can do because I think we're in a unique position as a sport like where like we always say like sports brings people together like I, w I just wanted him to be able to like explain to people like what they can do for their teammates and their friends and their you know like people in their school I really like that one um, and then you know just Kerrigan Miller who I haven't even released yet that's a good one and the Izzy and Chelsea one was fire too. Like, that was good. I like that. One. Getting the people from the vlogs on there is just so fun because we get to dive into all those stories. Like, yeah. and it's just uh, it's a blast. Do you think you'll stay in kind of the lacrosse world, uh, you know, as a career for for a long time? Do you think? Yeah, I always want to be involved in lacrosse, like always. But I have really, honestly, enjoyed what I'm doing for Leicester, like down down in Orange County. Mm -hmm. And if that's something that I could do after school and like live out here, like, Hey, like I'm all in. So I, I definitely have a couple different things that I'm like, I guess, deciding between for after school yeah. um, and kind of just like letting that take care of itself while I focus on like finishing up the senior year. But yeah, I definitely want to be in California is what I know. And I definitely want to somehow be involved with lacrosse like always. God, I have actually never been to Cal. You probably know that, but I, yeah, that's wild. Oh my God. So my last question before we wrap it up here, you know, where does Katie DeFeo see herself in five years? Oh gosh. Katie DeFeo sees herself in five years living in, five. living in, yeah. So I'll be, I'll be 26. Um, I'll be living in Santa Monica, California in a beach bungalow down by the, down by the ocean. Um, my, I will, I will have a YouTube channel displaying my life, what I like to do, who I'm hanging out with, that type of stuff. Okay. And I will have a job that requires me to have a camera in my hands. So I'll be doing content or I will be doing what I'm doing now with Lester. I'll be an editor somewhere like, but I just, I want my main source of income to always just be something with a camera. And I want to be like traveling. I want to be traveling with the camera. I want to be showing people like, I, I just want. I want my life to revolve around my work, like as, as a videographer and like, cause that's what I'm really passionate about. So wherever that, wherever that little camera takes me, like I'm in. I like that. If you're the second house, where are you putting that second house? Eastport or the vineyard? Probably Eastport. Uh, yeah. Pop, uh, <laughs> Pop's got it hooked up on the vineyard for a little while. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to throw that second house right in Eastport. Dude, Eastport's unreal. I, I've been an Eastport advocate my whole life. I, and one of my buddies from high school moved down there. So we like now get to hang out there a little bit more. And I'll tell you, like, I, I yeah. would love a, a nice house in Eastport, Maryland. Right on the water, baby. Without a doubt. Katie Fair, thank you so much for coming on Pelk Talk. Where can, where can the fans find you? Yeah, the fans can find me at KT DeFeo on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, go ahead, youtube.com slash Katie DeFeo if you want to check out the vlogs. Uh, connect with KT on Apple, Spotify wherever you like to listen to your podcast. So Let's go thank, follow thank her. For having me. All those, uh, all those links will be in the description below, but Katie, thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Mitch. It was great to see you too, buddy.